Sewing with silk can be a little bit tricky, especially if it's a really lightweight silk. So today I'm gonna to be showing you my favorite tips for sewing with really lightweight silks like chiffon. Hey guys, I'm Sari. I'm the founder of Seamwork. You can find us at seamwork.com and we are a community of sewists and we're all about designing and sewing your own wardrobe. So go ahead and check us out at seamwork.com. Today I'm going to be showing you one of our patterns which is the Laura pattern and how I completely transformed the look just by sewing it in a different fabric. I sewed it in silk and added a few little details which we're going to talk about. The reason I made this skirt is my sister is getting married in a couple weeks and originally I wanted to make a dress for the wedding and I wanted to do something kind of floaty and pretty. It's an outdoor wedding, um, something kind of 70s inspired and I was sort of looking around for patterns and I realized that it would be really cool to make a separate uh, skirt and top instead of a single dress. Um, and if I made it in the same fabric, it could be worn together and it would look like a dress, but I could wear the skirt separately just you know, to work with a sweater, with boots, that kind of thing when the weather gets colder. This is the original pattern. So the Laura skirt is just a really basic wrap skirt. It's got kind of an A-line shape. Um, the sample here on the cover and on our photos is a, um, I think it's a chambray. So just like a kind of a cotton fabric, very simple, very easy to sew. I wanted to change it up. So what I did is I sewed it in chiffon and I lined it and I added a ruffle and I'll talk a little bit about that a little bit later in the video. Today, I wanted to share with you my favorite tips for sewing really lightweight fabric like chiffon because it can be kind of tricky. So the first tip that I want to share with you um, this is one of my absolute favorite game-changing tools for sewing with silk. And this is something called Spray Stabilizer. Um, this is a brand called Sullivan's, and I bought this at our local fabric store. What you do is you just spray this right on your fabric before you sew it. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that your chiffon or um, other silk is pre-washed. The reason you want to pre-wash it is because you have to wash it after you stabilize it and you want your fabric to be um, in the same state before and after you sew it so it's not you know shrinking or changing in any way after you pre-wash your fabric uh, take it outside and hang it up the stuff can be kind of stinky um, it kind of smells like glue so um, I definitely recommend taking it outside don't do it indoors um, and hang it up and this is this is a piece of uh, chiffon that hasn't been treated yet so you can see it's really kind of floaty, um, very lightweight. You spray it and it gets this kind of almost papery texture that is a lot easier to work with. It's a lot easier to sew. It's a lot easier to cut. So just to kind of show you the two things side by side, you can see they look pretty different. Then when you're done sewing, you just wash your finished garment and the spray stabilizer just washes right out and you get your original floaty chiffon back. If you're worried about spraying something on your beautiful fabric, you can always test it on a little scrap. Um, you do have to be comfortable with washing your silk fabric, so if you're worried about it changing the sheen or the texture at all, um, I, again, would just take a little scrap and pre-wash it and see if you're okay with that. The next thing that I wanna share is cutting. So when you cut a light fabric like this, I really recommend um, using a rotary cutter, so I've got one here. Always use a new blade with a fabric like this because it snags easily. And if you have any little burrs or anything on your blade, it can really hurt your fabrics. So you just lay the fabric out in a single layer on your cutting table. Um, if you have pieces that are intended to be cut on the fold, you just mirror them. So you just cut one side and then flip it over and cut the other side. And you can actually save a little bit of fabric that way too. Um, it takes a little bit longer, so that's something that you want to take into account, but it'll make it a lot less frustrating. So just give yourself the time and do it that way. When I sewed this, I used a Microtex needle um, and I used a 60 slash eight, which is a very small needle. A really sharp, tiny needle like this is gonna really help you to sew without um, a lot of problems. Like if you've ever had um, your fabric getting kind of sucked down into the throat plate of your machine, like the needle is just pushing it down. Um, that's 
often because the needle is just too big or too dull. So instead of going straight through the fabric, it's just pushing it down, um, and then you get your fabric kind of getting eaten by the machine. So if you've ever experienced that, it's annoying. It's, you know, it's really, really frustrating. So start with the clean, fresh, sharp, tiny needle, and you'll avoid a lot of those problems. I made a few little changes to the pattern. So um, we actually have a pattern hack for this on our website if you if you want to go to seamwork.com and, and look it up. Um, but I gave it this kind of scooped out tulip hem in front, and we have instructions for doing that at Seamwork if you want to, if you want to try that yourself with this pattern. I added this ruffle to it, and that's really, really easy to do. Um, all this is is just kind of a big, long rectangle that you gather on one side and sew to the hem. The way I did it is I measured the entire hem all the way around, and then I doubled it, so the ruffle is twice as long as the hem of the skirt, and then I gathered it to fit. And the ruffle is sewn almost all the way around. Um, because it's a wrap skirt and it wraps under on the other side, um, I didn't want to sew it all the way up to the other side of the skirt, all the way up to the side seam here, because that would create some extra bulk on the hip. So you'd have that ruffle kind of underneath that lap there. And you know, that's just adding a lot of extra fabric that you don't need. So I sewed it up um, just to just below the hip. The seams I used are a narrow French seam. Obviously, the fabric is um, sheer, it's see-through, so you'll be able to see the seam, and a French seam is a really nice, clean finish. I did a narrow French seam, um, both because it is less conspicuous, it's smaller, but also with these long seams like this, you want something that's just gonna lay really nicely, and it's not gonna kind of buckle and curve and get all twisted. I used a narrow zigzag stitch instead of a regular straight stitch. I used a half millimeter in width zigzag. The length of the stitch is about the same, which is about two and a half millimeters, 2.4, two and a half millimeters. Um, but the, the width of the stitch is only half a millimeter, so you really can't tell that it's a zigzag stitch, but it just adds that little bit of stretch. Another change that I made is that I lined the skirt. Obviously, this fabric is uh, sheer, and so I wanted a lining. So if you kind of pulled it over, I used a silk habitat. Sometimes it's called China silk. Um, it's a very lightweight silk fabric. Um, it's light, but it's still opaque, so that's what you want when you're lining a really lightweight chiffon like this. You want something that's not gonna change the drape too much, um, but it's opaque, so you won't be able to you know, see your underwear. The last little change that I made to this pattern was that instead of doing a tie at the sides, I did a, um, a little trouser clasp here at the side and then at the other side, so it lays a lot more flat and looks just like a waistband on a dress. And then the last tricky bit that you might wanna think about is the hem. What you want is something that's very narrow. Again, you want it to be inconspicuous um, because of this sheer fabric. Um, but you also wanna make sure that the fabric is still, has that kind of floaty quality to it. And if you have too big a hem, that's gonna kind of impact the way the hem lays. And so you wanna do a little tiny hem, either a narrow turned hem or a baby hem. I can do a tutorial on a baby hem in the future if you guys wanna see that, just let me know in the comments. The last thing that I'd really say about sewing with silk, and especially with something like chiffon, which is a little bit tricky, is just take your time with it because if you rush, you're gonna get so frustrated. Things will go wrong, um, I guarantee it. It's happened to me a million times. Um, so just take your time. You know, when I sew this pattern, just out of the envelope with a regular fabric like cotton, or linen or something like that, you know, it would probably take about, about three hours. It's a pretty simple pattern. When I add all these changes and I line it and um, I do the French seams and work with this fabric and cut it on the single, single ply and all of that stuff, this skirt took me probably eight to 10 hours. So that should just give you an idea of the kind of time commitment that you have to think about if you're gonna sew with a trickier fabric like this. So that's how I transformed my Laura skirt and made something really, really different 
just by changing a few details and changing the fabric to something really special. If you like this pattern and you want to try out something like this yourself, you can find it on our website at seamwork.com. You can buy the Laura pattern there. You can just look it up there. Or if you want to become a member, you get new patterns every month, plus this really supportive, awesome community and lots of tools and resources that we offer. So go ahead and check it out at seamwork.com. We also have a free planner there for your sewing that you can download. It's just totally free. You just enter your email and we'll send it to you. So go ahead and check it out. And if you like this video, go ahead and click like and subscribe to our channel because this is a brand new channel and we're going to be adding lots more videos in the future. And if there's something in particular that you want to see, just let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts.